Legend has it that the sails of Cleopatra's boat were coated with fragrance before she set off to sea. The fragrance was diffused through the air, reaching the shore before Cleopatra would. And that was her elegant way of seducing Mark Antony with her arrival before he even caught sight of her. Fragrance, a symbol of something spiritual, novel, magical or seductive, has been a part of human history since ancient times. Who was the first perfumer? Where was alcohol-based perfume invented and why do people still argue about the role of France and Italy in European perfume art? Let's find out. The idea of a purposeful use of a fragrant material was born in the context of religion. The word perfume comes from Latin parfumus and translates as through smoke. Over 4,000 years ago, fragrant smoke was viewed as a medium that would transport the most sacred messages from people to gods, and it was an important part of holy rituals. So, the first form of perfume was an incense. The origin of perfume was ancient Egypt. In addition to incense and myrrh, Egyptians used flowers and other fragrant materials to produce aromatic ointments and balms with essential oils. You might remember from movies and books that scented substances were an important item in Pharaoh's burial preparations. Over time, the use of perfume started spreading way beyond temple's walls. Fragrant oils turned into an attribute of daily lives and the beauty routine, especially among royals, such as Cleopatra. She used some of the most luxurious cosmetics and perfumes available at the time, and actually, a couple of years ago, researchers and perfumers were able to recreate Cleopatra's favorite scent, based on old recipes written in ancient Latin and Greek. And it contained ingredients such as date oil, myrrh, cinnamon, and pine resin. The world's first recorded perfumer or chemist is a woman known as Taputi. She lived in Babylon around 1200 BC. She was an important figure in government and was an overseer of perfumery in the Mesopotamian royal palace. Taputi was the first to perform and describe the process of refining fragrant ingredients in her still, a chemical apparatus for distilling and filtering liquids. Advanced versions of such equipment remain in use in perfume labs today, but Taputi's reference to a still is the oldest in human history. History has left us with one of her recipes, a fragrant salve for the Babylonian king that she made using water, flowers and oil. Ancient Greeks were pioneers in mass production of liquid perfume, and I can totally see why. Today we're spoiled with air conditioning and ventilation, and I think to us, the ancient world would perhaps be the most overpowering in terms of smell. Just think about it. Sweating athletes, warriors, animals and their waste, all those smells filled the city and made it absolutely vital to set off some sacred spaces as well as those of luxury by making them smell good. As a result, fragrance was everywhere in the ancient world, from scented oils that were used to improve body smell and incense that was burnt inside homes and temples. However, unfortunately, with the fall of the Roman Empire, the development of perfumery was put on hold. At the same time, Eastern cultures started taking over the art of fragrance making. Their contribution can be described in two words, pivotal and innovative. It is needless to say that the modern perfume industry owes a great debt to the Persian Empire. Persians conducted experiments to improve upon the distillation process. 
but perhaps one of their greatest innovations was the creation of a non-oil based perfume. The Middle East played a vital role in introducing new perfume notes that would later be incorporated into Western perfumery, such as spices, resins, precious woods, herbs, ambergris, and musk. In the further east, ancient China took their adoption of perfume much more mainstream, where even simple items such as ink would be infused with perfume. Chinese were also pioneers in regards to using perfume for perceived medicinal purposes by purifying the environment around them. The two historic centers of modern perfumery are France and Italy. There is still no agreement, though, regarding which of them played the most pivotal role in the history of fragrances. I personally believe that a series of events that happened approximately between 13th and 17th centuries across Europe continue to shape the industry today. The first perfume brand, in its almost classical sense, was founded by the monks of Santa Maria Novella Monastery in 1221, in Florence. They used herbs and flowers that grew in the garden of the monastery to make soaps and fragrant water, and sold them in a beautiful local pharmacy. By the way, the pharmacy is open and still operating nowadays. It's one of the most iconic places in Florence that will amaze anyone with a luxurious decor and an abundance of gilding and frescoes. Thanks to the perfumery of Santa Maria Novella, Tuscany can be considered the origin of European perfumery. Hungary Water, one of the first alcohol-based perfumes created in Europe. Some say it was formulated at the command of Queen Elizabeth of Hungary to help with her headaches. But, according to my favorite legend, the water had rejuvenating powers and reversed the aging queen's appearance so much that the 25-year-old Grand Duke of Lithuania asked for her hand when she was 70. The oldest surviving recipe of Hungary water calls for distilling fresh rosemary, thyme, and brandy. The town of Grass sits in the hills above the French Riviera. Like Florence, it is often referred to as the capital of perfume. Funny enough, though, the fragrance industry took off in grass in part because it was an absolutely putrid smelling town. In the 18th century, grass was well known all over Europe for leather. As you might know, the process of leather making and the goods themselves are always accompanied by an extremely unpleasant smell. To fight this problem, Monsieur Gallimard, who was supplying King Louis XIII with leather goods, started to soak the material in the orange blossom oil before working it. The king loved the pleasant smell and soon Gallimard opened a separate production for perfumes and founded his own fragrance house. An important factor that contributed to the destiny of grass as a perfume capital of the world is its unique climate and an unspoiled landscape that is ideal for cultivating a range of aromatic flowers, including tuberose, orange blossom, lavender, jasmine, and others. Grass flower fields are still known around the world today, and it is still the place to be for fragrance makers. Giovanni Maria Farina was an Italian poet and perfumer, and an expatriate living in the German city of Cologne. In 1709, feeling homesick, he decided to recreate a scent of home, and that's how the world got its first Eau de Cologne. The perfume contained an alcohol concentration of approximately 2-5%, to 
and was fueled with essential oils from lemon, orange, bergamot, tangerine, neroli, and grapefruit. Other ingredients included jasmine, thyme, rosemary, and tobacco. The farina's aromatic substance was a hit all over the world. The royal homes of Europe were buying the magical and life-affirming Italian water, hoping to douse their surely very smelly 18th century bodies. The original formula of Eau de Cologne remains a secret, but many famous brands like Guerlain and Aqua di Parma have created their own version of the Cologne water. The beauty of Eau de Cologne lies in its simplicity. It typically represents a special melange of citrus oils and has a bright and crisp smell. In contemporary American English usage, the term cologne may also signify a less concentrated version of a popular perfume. Take two. Jean Guerlain, François Coty, and Ernest Daltroff are considered the fathers of modern perfumery, who put forward several fundamental theories in the science of creating smells. In 1905, François Coty created the first synthetic perfume, called Lorigan, mixing th synthetic and natural components in one bottle. He also was responsible for the world's first cheaper perfume. Cheaper. The perfume was created in 1917 and was named after the island of Cyprus. Cheaper was so successful that major perfume houses took inspiration from it and began to design their fragrances from the same olfactive family. Today, cheaper fragrances typically include things like oak moss, frankincense, patchouli, and bergamot. In 1925, Guerlain created the iconic fragrance called Chalimar, which defined an entire era in the perfume industry by setting a foundation for a whole new category of oriental fragrances. Chalimar was a reflection of an era, the smell of provocative sensuality and luxury. The famous French fashion designer of the early 20th century, Paul Poiret, became the first one to produce perfumes under the name of his clothing brand. Gabrielle Chanel also contributed to commercialization of perfumery by releasing Chanel No. 5. The beginning of the 60s is known for the rise of fragrances created specifically for men. In the 70s, the era of haute couture was replaced by the era of pret-à-porter. As a result, a whole new category of perfumes was established. They kept the high quality and sophistication of haute couture, but became more accessible. At that time, the release of the scandalous fragrance opium by Yves Saint Laurent became a real hit. Brands Estée Lauder and Elizabeth Arden also loudly declared themselves. The 80s were remembered for experiments with perfume bottles and the trend for amber fragrances. That's when Christian Dior brand returns to the arena with a fragrance called Poison. Another iconic fragrance of the decade was Calvin Klein's Obsession. Naturally, consumers got tired of dance and heavy perfumes and the market was ready to respond to that. In the 90s, bold smells of the past decade were replaced by natural, lighter scents. Azonic and sea notes formed so-called aquatic motifs, evoking associations with lotus and water lilies. Aphrodite once thanked her boatman Faun with a bottle of fragrant water. Since then, not a single lady could resist him. The liquid empowered the young man with an extraordinary ability to charm and conquer hearts. Many years have passed since this legend was told, but the magical effect of perfume on people never lost its relevance. So, what's next for the history of perfume? Time will tell.
The liquid empowered the young man with an anox. Empowered the young man with an ox. The <coughs> The idea of purposeful use. Uh, blah, blah, blah. That's it. Cut.